Hey everybody, on today's episode, I've got Melanie Thomas here, the CEO of RentWorks, and we're gonna be talking about the good, the bad, and the neutral of churn. Welcome to the Property Management Mastermind Show with your host, Brad Larson. Brad owns one of the fastest growing property management companies in San Antonio, Texas. This podcast is for property managers by property managers. You'll hear from industry leading professionals on best practices, new ideas, success stories, and lessons learned. This is your opportunity to learn about the latest industry buzz surrounding property management, as well as tips and strategies to improve your business. Solve your communication problems and save an hour a day, every day with Company Cam. Company Cam is a visual first job site communication app that allows you to have all of your properties right in your pocket. Company Cam automatically organizes unlimited property photos by date, time, and location while easily creating and sending reports to renters and owners to save time and money. Keep vendors and clients up to date on property projects from start to finish with live project timelines. Every project, photo, video, and conversation all within one one app, Company Cam. Visit companycam.com and make your life easier today. Resident Interface is a comprehensive delinquency management solution for property management companies that serve rental properties with over 500 units located in Florida, Georgia, Maryland, and Texas. Resident Interface offers property owners and managers a financially transformative end-to-end -end delinquency management experience. We're a single contact responsible for the entire process from late payment to eviction management and final debt collection. And we help increase net operating income through technological innovation, operational transparency, and response respectful recovery procedures. Learn more today at ResidentInterface.com. Welcome everybody to another edition of the Property Management Mastermind Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Larson. And today's guest, I have the esteemed CEO of RentWorks with, with me today, Miss Melanie Thomas. And we're going to be talking about churn. And so this is something that she and I deal with on a daily basis, weekly basis when we look at our numbers at RentWorks. And to kind of give you guys some background too, so I'm the founder of RentWorks and I was lucky enough to be blessed with Melanie years ago. And she's worked from the absolute ground up as a straight commission leasing agent to our CEO running the company. And she's kind of become uh, a pretty famous person inside the NARPM community. She's got more designations than hair on her head. It's pretty amazing. It's like <laughs> alphabet soup designations. And so she's a fantastic leader of our organization. And so anyway, give me some background. Um, we've been looking at these churn numbers and I'm like, we need to have a podcast on this because what we're looking at is one, enlightening, two, infuriating, and three, problematic to where we can identify some holes and potentially make some fixes. So backing up a little bit, uh, I wanted to talk about churn in a couple different ways, but I really need to introduce Melanie, give her a few minutes to say hello, and, and then we can dive in more into the churn factor. So Melanie, how are you doing today? Very good, Brad. Thank you for having me. Well, as you mentioned, I've been with RentWorks Property Management for almost seven years, going on eight here, and I started as a leasing agent and you know, it's just been a nonstop growing opportunity for me and for the company. And thank you for having me today. I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to our conversation. Yeah. So you're also going to be a facilitator at PMMCon 2023. Uh, you couldn't do it last year for us because you kind of had a baby. Then that got in the way. And so baby Addie is now close to one. Am I correct? She's eight months to tomorrow, actually. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting big, and so you enjoy seeing all the pictures of that, and and so we were lucky to able to and to get you going for PMMCon 2023 as a facilitator, and I really like that because you are a person that's actually doing the stuff. I mean, uh, I've turned over the company to you to run on a daily basis, and you know we do our strategic plannings and we get together, you know, I check in once a week or whatever. And, and I look at all the big numbers and, but you run the company, let's not sugarcoat that at all. You really do run it and it makes it work. And so it's going to be nice to have a facilitator there. That's, that's down and dirty in the weeds. Some of our facilitators have been in the business for decades, but their roles have evolved into differences than what you do. And it's really nice to have that perspective because as anybody, it's going to be tip of the spear. It's you and you have a perspective on everything. So to kind of get into this conversation, we want to talk about churn. So what does churn mean? So churn, in my opinion, means a couple of different things. We're going to talk about tenant churn and owner churn. 
So the tenant churn has always been one where in our industry, we see some particular vendors or contributors or influencers say that uh, churn on the tenant side is a result of you not doing something or slowing churn is the result of you doing something. So before I give my two cents worth, do you have any thoughts on that? Not necessarily, right? So we are in a military city. So if somebody's getting military orders, we can't help that. Like there are certain things that we can and can't control. So I agree with you or to an extent, right? Because there are some people that if they're going to move, they're just going to move. There's nothing we can do about it. So when it comes to KPIs and, you know, holding the team accountable, there's just some things that we can and cannot do. So it's hit or miss there. Yeah. Yeah. And so some of the talk is always about uh, providing them with, you know, free dry cleaning and uh, back rubs and these oh, resident, yeah, you know, make all their hopes and dreams come true. Now, we do some things that do contribute to that. So let's talk about that in reality, because uh, Mark Cunningham said it best. I mean, as far as tenant churn, you have near zero influence on that, right? But you, if you do the basics, like the, the basic blocking, tackling, performing maintenance, allowing them to pay their rent on time, uh, all that good stuff can turn into basically good paying tenants. Because, you know, I've said this for years and years that it's the job of a good property management company to take a marginal tenant and turn them into a very good tenant by allowing them the means to pay on time and the stick if they don't pay on time. I mean, that, that sets the precedent that if you have a zero tolerance just on rental payments, that you're going to make a marginal tenant turn into a great tenant because they know they can't get away with anything. And so there are some things we do. Like I want you to talk about the uh, dinner in the movie project that we've been doing for, for several years. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a program that we offer to the owners and the residents essentially is to just give a thank you to the tenants for paying down their mortgage, right? It's a nominal fee that we charge. Of course, the PM company makes some off of that for, you know, the time, the stamps, you know, the actual documents that are involved. Um, but it, it's a, such a feel good for the tenants. You know, they appreciate the fact that the owners and the property management company is coming together to thank them for being a on-time paying tenant, you know, and doing what they need to do as a tenant. So we have seen that just be an exponential, like thrust forward in Google reviews and just overall the good feeling around the holidays, right? The warm and fuzzies. So it, that just it, is insurmountable when it comes to, you know, the long-term le longevity of your tenants and just tenant happiness, owner happiness, when the tenants want to renew and they're happy, so do the owners. So yeah, we stole the idea from Ke the, the late and great Kevin Knight. And so at Liberty Management, they were out buying gift cards. So to paraphrase this program a bit more, just to give you an idea of what one of the things we do for our tenants is we go to the owners and we charge them a little bit of a, a, a dinner and a movie fee and they can opt out if they want that. And that's, you know, we always cringe at the, the, the Grinches out there that oh, I'm not going to spend, I'm not going to spend XX to buy my tenant anything, even though they're paying me, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars over the life of their stay. I'm not going to pay them anything in return. And that drives us, you know, me up a wall, but we charge the owners. Okay. And we do that in the October, November timeframe. That way, if they back out, we don't get double charged. And also, so we go out and buy dinner tickets or excuse me, a dinner certificate, like a, a gift card and then movie tickets. We package that up into a handwritten note to the tenants and we send that to the tenant in and around before the Christmas timeframe. And it's kind of like their Christmas treat from the owners. Uh, the tenants really appreciate it in a lot of different ways. Uh, yeah, we make a little bit from it, but it's not it's not a margin, you know, not it's not any bi anything big. And I also want to make the point that we do work with other management companies in the city. Like several of us got together, four, five, six of us, and we went to a large a restaurant tour here at El Chaparral, and we were getting gift certificates from them for the gift cards at a discounted rate. So there's nothing wrong with working with your competitors to form something like this to get a better rate because you know, instead of buying 500 or 1,000, we were able to buy 2,500, 3,000, 5,000. I can't remember the number, but uh, I just want to throw that out there. That's a really good program for an effective way to slow the tenant churn, right? I know it's it, like you said, you said it best. I mean, if they have military orders, they're not going to, you know, 
try to get around that to stay in the home they're in to keep continue renting. But uh, there are certain things where, yeah, you want to do the right things. And that's one of them, along with just good software. They can pay on time. You know, they can get maintenance requests entered. They can get maintenance requests completed. Uh, Their inspections are done timely. Their renewals are done timely. That's all basic stuff, gang. So there's not much else we can do on the tenant churn other than, you know, the, the things we talked about. Any other thoughts on that? Yes. Google reviews, right? Like when we send these out, the response that we get from owners and tenants for the PM company, right? The reviews that we get of these are just like insurmountable. Like you can't put a price on those. So you're paying a nominal fee for these cards, but what you're getting back is tenfold. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's definitely something to keep in mind. So if there are other property management companies out there that don't want to spend the money, spend it. Spend it. So you, it. you are the Google review queen. All right. So I'm going to give you some, some props. You're the props right now. Uh, we are close to what? 2000 reviews or something. Tell me what we got going on. 2100 at this point, Brad, I am pushing those things nonstop. Anytime our staff is talking to, you know, applicants that have been approved owners that just got an approved application vendors that just got a, you know, good job like we i am constantly incentivizing and rewarding our staff for getting these reviews so that just speaks to the seo and that's a whole nother conversation that we can go through you know i'm the vice president of narpa for 2023 and i talk to people all the time about seo and they want to grow their company but they don't focus on reviews that's a big deal right so it's just a never ending cycle. And here at Rentworks, I feel like we have it down to a science. So, you know. Well, a couple Rentworks. key points that I want to bring up on that. So one, we incentivize our team to get good Google reviews. You know, we, we, you can throw the number out there if you want, it's not a big deal, but if they get a good five-star review that mentions, you know, pick a name in our company, then we offer them a little bit of a bonus. It's a, a quick little spiff and you might see them get, four or five reviews in a week that drop their name. And so they get a pretty good spiff bonus from that. In addition to you personally taking on the one-star reviews and gang, there's no better way than picking up the phone. I don't know if there's any other way to get around it. Uh, Meeting them in person would be an idea. Great. But a a phone call from the CEO of Rentworks. Hey, we just got your, uh, some feedback on the, on your review. And I don't want to talk to you a little bit about it to see what we can do to resolve this, make it right. You know, how do you approach some of that? Because that's a learning lesson learned, learning lesson for the people out there that need to hear how you tackle the one stars. Absolutely, Brad. So what it comes down to is like, did we make a mistake, right? Did we, was there a lapse in processes? Did somebody make a mistake? If we are in the wrong, right? One of our core values is customer first. If we did something wrong, I'm here to make it right. So when I'm talking to these owners, you know, if I have to pay them a little bit because, you know, the touch of paint wasn't the best or, you know, they're upset because, you know, a quote was a little bit too high. Like my job is to level set with these owners. And so I feel like I've done a good job about, I I guess, like I said, just level setting with them and we're people to people, you know, we send bomb bomb videos. We're not just this big corporation organization. Like we are people. And so we're sending bomb bombs and we're saying, Hey, you know, I am the person, look at my face. Like, you know, this, this is what it is. And sometimes mistakes do happen and we make it right. Right. Like that is one of our things. Customer first. We make, if we did make a mistake, we make it right. And that is one big thing that I focus with all the staff. Yeah, it's a big thing. So, I mean, you got to hit those one-star reviews head on and we've even even engaged a service and I did a whole podcast on this to where if we have one of those one-star reviews and you know, that's maddening. And, And you and I have seen this many times where they walk in, they leave a one-star review with a just made up email address and no comments. Like there's no comments on the one-star review, (laughs) but that thing will stick. And do you know how bad that is to your overall ranking? Because it might take us 10 or 15 five-star reviews to negate the one-star review. So it's sometimes no matter how good you want to be and and how much you want to make it up to somebody, you get these these fake one-star reviews 
that stick for no reason. And there's no other way to, to work that except to try and reach out to Google. And we, we paid the service that comes and does and does that. So anyway, I mean, we can talk reviews all day long, but that's all diving back into the, to the funnel of churn, meaning that tenant churn. So we know there's only so much we can do on that. And I don't want to spend too much more time talking about it because we really want to get to the meat of this conversation and talk about more owner churn because, you know, we've been doing some numbers recently. And we're really trying to identify what that means. So according to the NARPM accounting standards, there's churn of clients. Client churn is your owner churn. Okay. So you have good, neutral, and bad. And so we're going to try and define that. And then we're going to talk kind of more down and dirty in the weed numbers with RentWorks, because I want people to hear that no matter how good you think you are, you cannot stop churn. And once you hear some of the reasons that people leave and some of the stories that Mel can tell, it's just, it, you'll relate to it and you'll roll your eyes and say, okay, I just need to understand that uh, you have to have a business development process to bring in doors because you are going to have natural churn no matter what. Now, keep in mind, we're also, we're victims of the market. The market was super hot the last couple of years. And we're also victims of Military City USA, where you get people coming in and going out, right? All the time. So people are buying and selling all the time. And, and there's no... That, like COVID, right? At the beginning of last year, we were having issues with vendors. And we kind of still are with them working and getting vendors to actually work. You know, so we had a, a little mass of owners that were wanting to exit management because we couldn't get people to work. So yeah, now let's talk through the churn. So let's, let's get, hear your definition definitions for good, neutral, and bad go from there. So for me, bad is, you know, owners that have switched management, they're upset over maintenance, miscommunication. There was a bad sign up or, you know, a breakdown in our processes. For me, that's bad. Do you have any other yeah, no, if they if we fire them, they fire us, that could be classified in, in there as well. But we kind of meant that uh, uh, a neutral one sometimes, especially if we fire yeah. them. Exactly. Right. So that this, this is why I want to bring this up because the NARPM accounting standards is vaguely okay in there. And then I basically deemed you that you have the final authority to classify them however you like. So if you feel that, hey, this was a uh, owner that was unresponsive. So I'm going to go to a great example after that uh, about a non-responsive owner and what you did with them because you were talking about it in pre-show. So in, in the bad realm of churn classification, uh, we think we have that somewhat uh, okay. So let's hear that paraphrase again of what you think a bad classification is for a bad loss. So a bad loss is owners that have switched management companies you know, they're upset with either maintenance or owner statements, miscommunication or otherwise, or they were just, you know, either a bad sign up or there was a breakdown in process. Okay. So, so the neutral, let, yeah, let's talk neutral. So uh, we fired them, right. It might've been a overpricing uh, refusal of, you know, imminent maintenance issues, infringing on tenants rights to quiet enjoyment, uh, an owner death, or, you know, estate issues or an owner moving back in. Like we classify those as neutral. However, right, we're December. And so we have a few owners that have told us they're moving back in. And I find out months later that they have sold with another company. So we're faced with like reclassifying those, right? Those owners didn't want to tell us that that was the case. So. Yeah, that's really, we're, we're going to hit a couple of examples because we, I have the spreadsheet that we've done up and, you know, we look at our numbers, uh, especially for our losses and it's just sickening. But when you start digging into each one of them, you're like, okay, I get it. Okay. I get that one. Okay. I get that one too. All right. Maybe it's not as bad as I think, because uh, you're looking at the overall numbers and it just, it, it's like, oh, we spent all this on biz dev and you know, you, you bring in 10 and you lose seven. You know, and that, that seems to be the, the track we've been on for 10 years. And we're not the we're not the, the the unicorn in our marketplace. I think everyone in our marketplace goes through the exact same thing. So it's not like we can fix anything overnight with a snap in our fingers. Now, a good loss. Let's talk through that. Let's talk through some of our sales successes. Yeah. So the good losses, I mean, we've had a quite a bit of those. So that's where our sales team, you know, the 
property manager or the owners of the homes that we manage have said, hey, we want to sell, whether it's a tenant in place or not, our sales division is able to capture those sales. So that's another good portion, right? Like other property management companies should be doing the same. We have a, you know, drip campaign and other things that we do to get those sales. And honestly, looking at these numbers at the end of the year, we could probably do a little bit better job. And we're having a annual meeting with, you know, our salesperson and Brad and myself, and we're going to get those at, for 2023, right, Brad? Yeah, no, we brought in a really good sales team. We have uh, Damian and Manny, they're leading the charge on that. And we hired Debbie LaRiviere and she came in and consulted with them for the first half of 2022, uh, really got them in line, right? And so I was very excited about that. So we can talk through some numbers. I think it's kind of interesting. So we sold uh, 41 homes or was it 43? It was I thought 43. It was yeah, so we sold 43 homes with a volume of, I think, you know, pushing 19 million out of the sales volume of yeah. homes that we manage. Those were homes in our inventory. And so rather than those going to another brokerage, we sold those homes for you know, that amount. I should have done some deeper analysis to see how much of how many of those sales actually stayed inside of our inventory. So that's the next level number we need to look at. Let's assume for fun, it was half of them, right? So let's say we kept 20 homes out of the 43 in our inventory. That's pretty dang good. And if, if you want to think that's over conservative, cut it in half. Okay. We kept 10 homes in our inventory. That's fantastic, right? That's, that's stopping churn right there. And so we are talking now about churn and that's a, a good way to stop it. Imagine a world where the phone doesn't ring, but tenant leads still get pre-qualified and scheduled. Where in-person showings get coordinated automatically in real time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Where occupants and owners are automatically notified of showings and leasing reports. Or imagine no one has to show your rentals and they get leased faster than ever, safely and securely. That's the world of Tenant Turner. Come learn more about our beautiful scheduling software and world-class customer support. Call us, 888-976-4638 or visit www.tenantturner.com. Now, the other side of that, that's, that's driving you and I insane is 41 of those homes, um, we had 43 in-house, but we also found another 41 homes that sold outside of our organization. Talk us through that a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, we can't avoid the, you know, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my aunt, my uncle is a real estate agent now, and they're going to sell our home. Right. So there's a certain portion of those, but there are so a certain portion of those that are an opportunity for us. We send out, you know, drip campaigns and emails and texts and notices to, you know, the folks that are doing these transactions. So it's just, it's an opportunity for us to capture those sales. So I don't know if we need, you know, what we can do extra, but, you know, we have our January planning to, to come up with those plans because it, it's a lot of money out there. And if, you know, our brokerage, can you imagine the other ones out there that aren't yeah, for doing sure. the we, job as we are? Like we are actively focusing on those things. So, and we're losing this amount. So can you imagine the other ones that aren't? So let's think through that in numbers, gang. Let's break this down to some common sense. So that's, there's 41 transactions we missed out on with a volume of 14 million. Right. So arguably that's around three hundred to four hundred thousand in gross commissions missed. And so, okay, be conservative out of the forty one. Cut that in half and cut it in half again. What if we could have kept ten more of those homes and sold those ten for, you know, three million in volume and made, you know, another hundred thousand towards the company? Right? That's that's how the math works. And so we are doing the drips, we are doing the notices, but Damien and his team, they're gonna start getting policies and procedures tighten up a bit more because we had a real good conversation about this with uh, Peter Lohman 
And he and I debated the merits of reaching out to your owners and providing them an unsolicited CMA, comparative market analysis for sale on a consistent basis. Now, I think that idea is fantastic. There are a lot of management companies that are out there doing this type of stuff already. Mike Connolly is whom I learned it from out in San Francisco. And they're sending out unsolicited CMAs every six months. And I firmly believe in that. But the follow-up has to be there as well. You just can't send them an email and hope it gets to them. I think there should be a phone call with uh, every six months, almost every owner. And you can hit them up with two things. Are you interested in selling? No, not right now. Are you interested in buying more rental properties? Right? There's two different factions you can take them down. It's not just sell, sell, sell. If you're going to sell, bring it to us. If you aren't interested in selling, are you interested in buying? Do you want to be part of our pocket listing program? Do you want to uh, be notified if we come up with a good deal? And do you want to, you know, just kind of, we can set you up a search and start looking for homes right now in the open market on the MLS. There's all kinds of ways you can take them down. And that's what we want to enhance for 2023. Our, our team has been good so far. I, I don't really have a lot of complaints, but again, if we can get... 25% of the 41 sales that we missed, if we can get another 10 sales under our belt for 23, that's what we want to strive to do. You're constantly trying to get better. 100% agree, Brad. So when are we going to- What have you not the, agreed? When are we going to get to the crazy- oh, Not agreed? <laughs> the, uh, no, you, you, yeah, you smack me around a lot, quite a bit. So no, it, I like it because- um, what we wanted to talk about now is we spent some time on the goods, but I want to give some people an example of the weird ones, the the ones you could classify as neutral, the ones you can classify as bad. And I, I wanted to let people know that it's not all us. It's not all sales. It's going to be some crazy folks out there. And it, it makes me think of James Wise. You remember you remember yeah. that guy from Ohio? Yeah. So he's got the Holton Wise fo show, Holton Wise show, James Wise. And I did an interview with him and he he's, it's almost like uh, his method is so abrasive that he's become that guy that you either love or you hate. Okay. Um, remember, it's like this. We, we looked at Black Rifle Coffee, Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, took the total right side of the market of coffee. They embrace conservatives. They're gun-toting, veteran-loving, America-loving, you know, coffee providers. And they totally went to the right side of the spectrum. And they forgot about the left side. They don't. We don't care about the left side of the political world. We just want to go after the right side. Well, that's what James Wise has done. Is he's gone after the that particular type of an owner, and. Just some of the things he posts on his website and the, the Facebook. He posted one today where there is a tenant with a bug infested property and there's a video of it. And I hope you don't have a big lunch bar prior to watching that because that thing will make you throw up. It's just disgusting. So I got off on a tangent there, but I wanted to make people realize it's not all us. There are some weird things going on out there. So as we take a look at our October 22 uh, losses on our spreadsheet, you know, you had a really good story about this one particular owner that you've been managing for years and years, uh, the Oak Ranch address. And you know which owner this is. I don't want to drop names, but can you tell us more about that story just to highlight some weird stuff out there? Yeah. So we stopped managing his property and it had been over almost five or six years that we were paying his utility fees. And, you know, he was paying our management fees and we weren't quite sure what he was going to do with the property. So we had to determine like, Hey, Mr. X, we've been managing your property. Like let's, this is the plan. And he decided to terminate with us because we turned off his utilities that we'd been paying for and Brentworks had been in the negative for many months. But he straight up ghosted you, right? He was non-responsive for months and months. Ghosted. Um, he had been racking up bills, racking up bills. So I finally said, put the kibosh on it. He either reaches out to us and turns out, Brad, that he was living there the whole time. <laughs> so, you know, we had been paying the management bills. He had been telling us that he was out of state, but he was not living in the property and we were just paying his bills, floating him, floating him, floating him, not charging him fees. And so I finally put the kibosh on it. And when I told him, you owe us X amount of 
dollars for your utility bills, he terminated with us. So that's that's a great example of stuff that's not our fault. And we, you know, looking through our October losses, there's a couple of them in there I wanted to bring out because I'm trying to illustrate to the audience of property managers that it's it's not always us. Can we do improvements here and there? Absolutely. We're never perfect. It's always about communication. But I also wanted to like you know, you, you hear people out there that they think they have the cure for stopping churn. Well, there is no cure when you're dealing with people. People are weird. So another good one. Another good one is there's we had this home under management for eight years, a Cedar Bluff ranch, and the family's moving back into the home. So how the heck could we have controlled that? I, I don't know how many, you know, you could buy them roses and, and chocolates every day, but they're going to move their family back into the home. You can't control that. They weren't dishappy with the service. So that's like a neutral loss that, again, highlights that some of these are just out of your control. And the only way to stop, uh, losing homes on an annual basis is to add more than you lose. So luckily we've been able to do that. We've been slowly growing over the years, but it kills us when you add, I don't know, for fun, let's say you had 300 in a year, but you lose 200 in a year. And those numbers are fairly accurate to what we've been seeing. Absolutely, Brad. And then you see, you know, just those bad signups, right? We've always talked about the operations and the sales rub like sometimes operations is willing to sign on people that maybe don't own the homes or maybe there's an estate issue or maybe there's an airship issue. So they maybe sign them up, but then operations is sitting on them for several months. And so, I mean, we just get the full spectrum of them. I mean, we have had this year, maybe two to three owners that were upset with us because signs have disappeared from their properties. Like they're not in the best areas, right? And so people are stealing the signs and they decide, you know, obviously you know that RentWorks Property Management, if we go to a property, we're doing a video tour, right? Like the owner is gonna see that we went to your property. And so there's a proof of the sign and the sign has been repeatedly stolen. We have the proof, but the owners are willing to fire us because the sign's missing. Like, it's just mind boggling. Like we have done our job and you just want to fire us because, you know, a vagrant or somebody down the street or a competitor has stolen our sign. So we've also had owners that, you know, we have a lot of HOAs here and they want to do a, a very custom sign outside of our RentWorks sign. RentWorks isn't going to pay for it. And so they fire us because we're not going to pay $300 for the HOA's personal sign. So, you know, it all comes full circle and we can continue to go down all the reasons why. But I think we should, because it's kind of, it's kind of fun. People out there are realizing that, okay, no matter how good you get, you can't control these. Now, maybe we could have controlled the HOA thing, but not really. And there's never about this communication up front junk. Uh, you know, that's, that only goes so far. Our communications are so good in writing. We do a very good job in person and you can tell an owner, for example, specifically, we've lost owners for this. Hey, Mr. Owner, you're going to have code compliance code compliance for the sixth time, code compliance, 10th time, code compliance coming up. What does that mean? That means we've got to put deadbolts on all your doors and install smoke detectors and, and fix up your home with all these different things that are going to make it code compliant. Oh, but it's going to cost you two, three, 400 bucks up front. Not our fault. It's just how it is. And they don't realize that until they get the first bill, then they fire us. Right? How many of those have we seen? And you look back at that and it's like, nope, we beat it up to them, but it's in person and you know, we sell it to them in person. Uh, our biz dev team walks them through it. We, it's in our management agreement that we have to do this to the property. Uh, it's, just, it's just maddening that they don't give us the opportunity to manage because they were upset that they had to bring the property to code. And you get the owners that say, well, I could have done the smoke detector myself, right? Okay, then how do we know that's done? Do you have documentation on that? So if there's a fire and then here comes a, a lawsuit, you know, here comes a big old attorney saying, prove to me that the smoke detector was changed. Well, we can't because the smoke detector burned up in the fire and now we're all at peril for millions. And so those things are real. And there's just certain things that are out there that we can only tolerate so much of. I want you to talk a little bit now about the whole 
house didn't rent because the owners come in and they overprice it. They get wind of this new hot rental market. They overprice a home and they don't listen to us and they end up firing us. I'm sure you have two or three examples of that. Absolutely, Brad. So like here we are, right? 2022 December. If we are pulling comps when the market was just crazy right tenants were bidding each other up if the rent was 15 somebody was willing to pay 16 or 17 like that is not the current status or the market right now so if we're pulling mls statistics they're not what it is right now you know so our job as property managers is to tell our owners those things. So we are losing a few because they don't believe us. Right. And so I've seen, right. We've done this drill with all the properties that we've lost. They've left rent works, a few of them, and they've gone to competitors, but guess what? Their homes are still sitting on the market for the same price that they left rent works. Like I don't think, and maybe that's our thing, you know, not, keeping our, keep the, the knowledge, right? Like it's, it's the same thing. Any property management company that you hire is going to do the same thing. So, you know, you want to fire us and go with the competitor. Cool. You're going to start at ground zero with the new property management company. And in doing this drill with all our cancellations, they're in the same spot that we, they left us in. Here's a good one I want you to bring up. So I want you to bring this one up. This is a a, uh, Tower Terrace from November. And the notes say they blamed water damage on us. And so uh, it was in November on Tower Terrace, line 17. And uh, the blamed water damage on us. And I think we talked about this before, but I thought it was a good paraphrase to where uh, I want you to tell the story. But, you know, if I remember right, this is where there was a leak in the home and the owner was just super upset and blame us for, for whatever reason. Do you have any more notes on that? Yeah, absolutely. So the tenant made us aware of some water issues and we were attempting to get those things situated. And in this situation, the owner did not want to repair, right? They didn't want to have to deal with the insurance thing and paying their deductible. That's what we're here for, right? To mitigate the the damages with the tenant and the owner. So, you know, if we know that these imminent damages are present, potential for mold or, you know, just imminent damages in general, our fiduciary duty is to the owners to let them know. In this situation, this owner was upset because we were being proactive, right? So we were doing our job and they decided to cancel with us because we brought this issue to light. That that's just not a good landlord, right? We're not saying any addresses. We're not saying any owner's names do better, do better. Yeah, that's a, that's a part of it. I mean, you look through some of these losses and the home's not renting. There's one or two of those. And that's that's part of how the pricing model works. I mean, we do our very best to price it. Uh, some of the losses that we do incur, uh, you know, obviously there's just, just with any organization you have, you mentioned earlier, it was the sales to operations handoff. And that's, we think we're doing that okay. I mean, it's always going to be an 80% solution. There's always 10 or 20% more room for improvement. But, you know, you sign up somebody with business development, they're all fired up, they're signed up, they're good, they're here, you know, documentation's all done. And then you hand them over to the operations. And at some point, maybe the ball gets fumbled. And the responsibility of that ball goes on both parties. It's the sales operation to ensure that they're handed off cleanly to the operation side. It's the operational side to make sure that sales is giving them something on a silver platter and it's discussed and handled immediately. Not, okay, I'll get to it next week. Here it is Thursday. I'll get to it next week, Monday or Tuesday, and the owner goes without a phone call or notification for three, four, five days. That's when owners walk away and they get mad at you and they're gone. And so 
again, we're not perfect at it. We know there's an area for improvement. I think part of it in the churn conversation, which is what I wanted to talk about, is identifying some of the weak points that I think you as other property manager companies out there that are listening is that you can identify some of those and try to do your very best to fill in that information, to, to fill those gaps, to maybe make improvements where you can. And I wanted to air some more dirty laundry to say, hey, it's not all about us. There's some people are people. You know, you, you can infer whatever you want out of that. You know, we can go through example after example of just the crazy stuff that goes on in working with owners, working with tenants. And again, some of these, these owners, you know, they, they get to the point where they won't make repairs. They won't do what they're supposed to do. So naturally you have to let them go. And then you get owners that will lie to us. That's very common. Oh, no, I'm just going to move back in. I'm just going to move back in. I, you know, I'm coming back. And next thing you know, the home's on the market with another property manager or another real estate brokerage for sale. And so, you know, that's that's part of the, the downside of this. And there's not much you can do about it. About it. Just, just keep open communication and do your best on some of these ideas. And so are there anyone atop your mind that you want to bring up as far as some most unusual things for owner churn where uh, it just was the weirdest thing ever? Any of those that you want to bring up? Yes. So we had an owner. Are you familiar with the show BattleBots on the Discovery yeah. Channel? Like those okay. fighting robots? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Owner that had signed up with us and said that he had over $5,000 worth of battle bots in his property. Obviously, you know, we do a move out owner inspection. The owner moved out. The next day we did an inspection, no robots. Well, we listed the home for rent. Multiple showings took place. And then the owner reaches out to tell us that these $5,000 worth of battle bots were missing out of his property. So that's when I have to tell you, Brad, we have just good processes in place because I could show, look, the day you moved out, those robots were not in place, but he chose to fire us because he said he was missing those robots when they were not there during our inspection, when he vacated the property and he ended up going down the street to a local competitor. Well, good luck, X, Y, and Z competitor, because we dodged a bullet. So that's a great example of just how you can't control things like that. And, you know, we have taken on properties where we might have been the second or third property manager. And you think that they are sometimes air quote trained by that point. Sometimes they're not. And we've taken on bad properties or even bad owners with big, you know, multiple properties that just end up don't work. They don't work out. They, they really should be self-managing. And so, you know, the thing on the big strategic nationwide front is the more litigation that, that comes around with property management, the more legislation uh, that's going to be in, put in place by the government, it's going to make, make it very much uh, more of a challenge for these owners to self-manage. Uh, we're going to be seeing that in California. It's going to bleed east eventually to where it's going to be very difficult. Uh, it might turn into a renter's nation more and more and more. And so, just for example, property code 92.111, uh, I don't think the average owner would understand that. You know, I don't think they could actually comply to that particular law, given the fact that if you do take a fee in lieu of security deposit, you're supposed to buy insurance with that. And if you don't document that perfectly, that could be implicated as security deposit and some sneaky tenant can come in and file a lawsuit and go straight to the law and you could be screwed over for treble damages and attorney's fees. And that's, down. yeah, yeah. Those are things that are just, that is going to pop up. So yeah, this has been a pretty good conversation about the good, the bad, the neutral churn that's out there. And I'm, I'm glad we're able to illustrate the point to the audience that it's not all about just, uh, roses and rainbows here on the owner front and tenant front. Now we do a pretty good job of the tenants, but we cannot do a, an, a, that great of a job on the owners when they don't want to help with us. You know, they don't want to work with us. One of the things that we have working now is uh, we're striving to put together some sort of a syndication to where we can work on purchasing these single family homes ourselves through RentWorks. And so I don't have a perfect solution for it yet. It's a lot of moving pieces, but if you really want to go next level and stopping churn instead of them selling open market, 
maybe you turn around as a property management company and sell it to one of or another one of your investors or even buy it yourself and become the investor and keep it in your in your inventory under management so that's next level that's next 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 level uh and we're still getting there i'm still a rookie on that i've hired aj and chris shepherd to help me with that they're they're both narpum affiliate guys and a, uh, aj is the uh, rvp for narpum so we're working through these challenges together and uh, I'm I'm glad we had this conversation about churn. So for 2023, we're doing our uh, annual planning here coming up first part of January. We're going to take a hard look at this and the numbers and say, okay, these are our goals. And so part of this conversation you and I've had is, you know, everyone says, know your numbers, know your numbers, know your metrics. Well, these are our metrics. Sometimes they're ugly. Sometimes they are sickening. But when you dig into them, they're not as bad. You don't think, okay, well, maybe we're not as bad as we think when we have an owner that that accuses us of stealing robots out of thin air. Okay, maybe we're not that bad. Absolutely, Brad, but there's opportunities. So I'm really excited, right? There's the no-brainers, right? They should never have been signed up or a bad sign up or whatever. But there are opportunities that we have identified within RentWorks. And I'm looking forward to fixing those because it's just exponential what we can earn if we could just fix these minor issues, right? No property management company is 100%. I know people like to think we have our shit together. We do, but there are some things that we can do a lot better at. And that's what we're looking forward to for 2023. So these metrics are our benchmark. That's that's what I want to get to next is you and I are going through where we are now so we can actually set up a KPI goal for 2023. And, and that could be just like reducing churn by 10% or reducing your bad losses by 10%. I mean, something like that to where you can quantify it, put a number to it, and then start taking action upon it. So now that we know where we are, we know where we want to go. And that's going to help us fill the gaps of where we can come up with some good ideas to, to maybe make some things different and better. Yeah, it's an 80-20 rule, right? We are we think we're 80% there, but we always have room for that last 20%. So, Mel, I look forward to seeing you in Nashville. Of course, I'll see you here this week for dinner, but I'm just telling you, you know, we got our big Christmas dinner coming up, right? We got to go. Uh, all the families are going to go and, and do our big Christmas dinner, but... Uh, PMM Con 2023, you are one of the facilitators. And I think anyone who gets into your group is going to be lucky because you're one of the few that's actually still doing it at a very low ground level, talking to the owners, talking to the tenants, and nothing wrong with the others. They're all great. I'm just saying you're one of the ones that I really like about it because it adds that that bottom line distinctive working with the, the people that are working with us now. So... Appreciate you coming on. I'm going to sign us off. And until next time, gang, we'll see you at the next episode. Pest Share, a pest control amenity for your resident benefits program, starting at just $5 per door. You can give your residents the pest control coverage they need. Pest Share will even pay for the expensive infestations like bed bugs and cockroaches and the debate over who pays for pest control, while Pest Share turns an expense into added revenue. For more information, check out their website at pestshare.com forward slash property managers. This has been a podcast episode by propertymanagementproductions.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave us feedback, and come back for our next episode.